What's going on with y'all fam? We back with another message, back with another video. If you're new to the channel, I appreciate you for joining. To my real ones that are tapped into the music, thank you for the love and support. If you do not know though, I am an artist. I have music available on all platforms. Three albums out, plenty of singles for you guys. Go check me out on your favorite streaming service, whether that's Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, all that good stuff, man. Soulswithpurpose.com is still available. If you haven't got a hoodie, I don't know what you're doing with your life. You should go get you a hoodie, man. Let's get straight into this message. I'm here to be obedient, completely obedient. God has been just constantly putting this on me. As you can see in the title, do not bite the bait. Do not bite the bait. Listen, man, this is coming from a place of experience. For all my chosen ones out there who are going through a process with God, right? There's a heavy anointing and calling on your life. The enemy is going to try to bait you and it's not always what you think. It's not always going to look like what you think it's going to look like. Okay. Don't bite the bait. It's a distraction sent to you by the enemy himself. So as you continue to grow in Christ early on, you know, the enemy likes to just kind of attack a believer at first, right? But once he sees that you're developing in Christ, once he sees that you are beginning to resist him, you're beginning to understand the word of God more, you're beginning to hear from God more, whatever it looks like. It's just like they say, when your enemies can't beat you, they try to join you. This is what the enemy will do. He will send things in your life that look like God things, okay? They look good. They may even look so good that you you can't deny, you feel like you can't deny that this is God's blessing in your life. But God told me literally, thunderous in my spirit, he said, come on here and tell my people to stop biting the bait of the enemy. I just went through this myself, okay? The enemy likes to send things into your life and it's not always bad, okay? His whole goal is to get you back in the flesh, back operating in the flesh, and focused and fixated on things that aren't aren't necessarily bad things right but they're taking away your time and your prayer life you walking in the spirit and you growing in your knowledge right and spending that one-on-one -on -one time with the holy spirit so you need to really have discernment and not go through what i had to go through the hard way I come on always on this channel to teach from a place of literally learning lessons and being brought low, right? Learning things the hard way and trying to just give you guys a message of encouragement through my story, my pain, everything I've gone through, right? So it can look like this. A new job opportunity gets sent in. You're making more than you've ever made in your life. But guess what? Guess what also is happening? Now you're no longer talking to God like you used to, right? You're tending to this thing over here. You got this thing over here. You're tending to this, you're tending to that. And it all looks good, it can make sense. It could be, you know, a child, your family, friends, a good career, your house, your business, your job. And God showed me a vision of how, you know, we're always tending to all these different things and we kind of just say, oh, hey, what's up, God? How you doing? And we keep going and we're doing all these different things. You see, a lot of Christians think that when you get called away from your family, when you get called away from loved ones, that it is not of God to do these things. But the Bible verse that gets overlooked the most is he that loves his mother, his father, his son, or his daughter more than the father is not worthy of the kingdom of God. So you got to understand, don't bite the bait. God just really wanted me to reiterate this. Don't be like me. I just bit the bait, right? The enemy set a trap up that didn't look like a trap. This is what he's going to do to you when you start elevating and resisting him, right? He's not going to necessarily attack you the way that he, you think he would. He'll distract you. Instead of attacking you, he'll distract you. So you're no longer praying as much. You're no longer reading. You're back in your flesh. You're tending to all these good things, though. But your relationship with God is slowly deteriorating, right? You no longer have as much time to pray. You're not fasting as much no more. Maybe you're not reading. Why? Because you're tending to all these different things. Like I said, you got to take care of this over here, that over there. And it's just like five or 10 minutes out of your day and say, oh, hey, what's up, God? And you keep it pushing. The enemy's got you, you know, deceived, wrapped up, but you don't even realize it because it looks like a blessing from the most high. This happens in the music industry, man. This happens all the time. You know, people say, praise God for blessing me with these things. 
Those are not blessings from the Holy Spirit, from Christ himself. These are blessings that were sent forth in by the God of this world. And you got to understand, Satan can do this, man. Satan knows how to bless, you know, people that are of this world with good things. And it looks good. It looks harmless, right? A lot of people think new opportunities always means this is a God thing. Oh, God had to do this, right? And I just learned this lesson. You know, the enemy put a house into my life. He um, brought me back to an area I knew I shouldn't have been be in, right? In the inner depths of me. But logically, right, with the pressure from people all around me, me being a father, logically, it made a lot of sense, right? Okay, I can, you know, care for my child and still tend to this work that I'm doing on here with the Lord and spend time, you know, with God in my secret place. But the minute I got there, you guys have seen firsthand, right? Look at what happens when you bite the bait of the enemy. You have to use discernment. You got to pray and you got to really, really know if this thing is a good thing or is it a God thing? Because a lot of good things are sent in by Satan. Satan will bless you with money, houses, finances, great careers, jobs, all these things of the world. So he can pull you away slowly but surely from elevating in Christ, right? For continuously seeking his face like you used to when you didn't have these things in your life. He just told me to come on and say, tell my people, do not fall for the trap, the bait, or distraction. Now, one of the best ways you can identify is if this thing was sent in to your life from the most high God of Israel, is if it is pushing you closer to God, if it is giving you a sense of peace in your walk with Christ, in the spiritual, not just the physical, right? Because we all want comfortability in the physical. You know, we all want stability and comfortability and all this stuff. But if it is pulling you away if it's not pushing you closer to righteousness, closer to the um, fruits of the spirit, closer to Christ, then it is not of God. It doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. The enemy loves to use good things. This is why people get, you know, they say, oh, that he sold his soul. She sold his soul. A lot of the times that can look like you doing that thing that makes sense to you logically. And it's feeding your family. It's doing all these things. But you don't have no type of real prayer life anymore you don't have no um revelation coming to you no more you're walking in the ways of your flesh right and it doesn't necessarily even have to be sin it's just a simple distraction don't bite the bait you got to understand this happens with relationships happens with everything you know houses jobs family friends if anything is pulling you away from spending that quality time in the word of God, the quality time that you need to hear his voice, the quality time that he wants with you so he can begin to develop that relationship, you need to understand it's going to be hard, but you have to be obedient. You have to be obedient, right? And if God is telling you to let something go and you get persecuted for it because people can't comprehend, right? They're not seeing what you're seeing or they're not seeing what God is seeing for your life and you have to start you know do certain things that are going to really upset people you know one of the toughest things is walking away from environments people places things and literally walking by faith right you may not know how things are going to look I've been doing this now for five years with the Lord I never know what it's going to look like but I trust them that's what he wants right you can't a lot of us humans man we're all guilty of wanting to know you know, we got to have our ducks all lined up before we make a move. That's not faith. There's no faith in that. That is you relying on self. This is where a lot of Christians get, you know, um, wrapped up in biting the bait and distracted. They think because they have a new career now, um, maybe reconciliation with family or whoever it may be, that it's a God thing. But they don't realize that it's pulling them away from God and they're no longer walking by faith like they used to. God you cannot please God without faith, okay? And this is something he just wanted me to come on here and share with you guys. I pray it edifies you. Like I said, if you're wondering, man, is this of God? You know, my life is maybe getting better. Even It feels like things are getting better, but you got to really sit back and think, okay, is this thing taking time away from my walk with Christ? If it is, ask God what he wants you to do and how you need to go about it. And do not fear, okay? Because the, the minute that God tells you, I want you to let this go and walk with me by faith, that is exactly when you're going to get met with fear, right? Or doubt. And you're going to start toiling. Well, I don't know how it's going to, how am I supposed to just do that? I hear so many Christians do this, man. Well, I can't just get up and do, I can't, there's no faith. 
they have dead faith right there's a lot of christians who have dead faith demonic faith like they say in the bible right even the demons believe a lot of christians have demonic faith meaning yes they believe in the lord but they have no proof in their actions in their words and their lifestyle to show that they're truly seeking after the spirit of the lord no matter what it looks like no matter who it upsets even your own flesh right so do not bite the bait and make sure you're really you know reflecting and just taking time out to say lord is this of you it looks good i, I can't it's going to be so hard to deny this thing it's going to be so hard to let this stuff go if it's not of you but i trust you lord i'm going to walk by faith a lot of us are called to walk by faith most everybody that believes is called to walk by faith and this is where the enemy will meet you immediately with fear right he tells you to step out and do something for instance i'll just give a short testimony with my life he told me to let everything go get in my car and walk with him right do you understand what that made people think about me okay because a lot of people are carnal and a lot of people have dead faith and a lot of people don't even know scriptures like they say they do when it comes to certain things like their family like their hometown like environments they're used to being in you're going to stay in that place and be distracted and wrapped up in satan's little web and you think it's a good thing this is what happens time and time again there's countless of souls man so you know like i said i wanted to just come on here and tell you do not bite the bait don't be distracted man if it's pulling you away but it's a good thing it can be a family member it can be your best friend it can be that great job opportunity but it's taking you know time away and time out from your relationship with christ if you feel like you're going more into your flesh by the day now that these things have came into your life you need to question it and you need to ask God to reveal these things and allow him to minister, right? And one of the hardest things you're going to do is deny yourself and pick up your cross daily. This is what he asked us to do, right? You may want that career. I understand. You know, we all want to have stability and comfortability. We all want to be in a place of contentment at times. And we should always be content no matter what. But God wants us to walk by faith and trust him, even if it's going to upset this entire world. And believe me, it is. Okay, but regardless, God will provide for you. He will protect. He will make provision, especially if there's purpose on your life. There's always provision for purpose, man. Don't ever doubt it. Sometimes God just wants you to have that mustard seed of faith, right? And say, okay, I don't know what, why you're telling me to do this, Lord, but I trust you. And the minute that you make the decision to say, I'm letting it go, and you, you take that first step, that's when you're going to see the breakthrough. That's when you, you're going to see God come through for you. You have to get past that certain wall. There's a wall that gets put up immediately, right? It's a, it's a wall of fear or a wall of doubt. The minute that you get this revelation that God's asking you to let some things go and walk by faith, he may tell you, hey, you know, your family might not like it. You know, your friends might switch on you. This might happen to you, but you need to be prepared. If you can break through that first barrier of fear, that is when you begin to walk in faith. And you will see the Lord work in your life like you have never seen before. He wants that relationship. He wants that personal relationship. He doesn't want you comfortable in the distraction that looks like a blessing sent forth by him. So you got to really, really take a step back, come out of your flesh, pray fast, whatever you got to do, read your word and just communicate to him, right? Have a personal relationship with him and ask him to search your life out, reveal things, that are not of him that may you may be convinced are a lot of christians are convinced the things that are in their life are all sent in by the most high god no there's a god of this world as well who controls you know things that we all need shelter you know a way a, a way of income all these different things right and a lot of the times chosen ones are called to an isolated place so we can continue to grow and elevate in the lord and everybody hates this about you when you start to choose him, when you start to choose to consecrate with him, when you start to say, you know what, I don't care anymore. I know I can trust you, Lord. Once you've seen God make a move in your life, that's all you need. That's when you're going to start to really, really develop trust and faith in him. You know, the more that I've walked with the Lord, I've been out here for five years now on and off, in and out of my car, Airbnbs, living in my car, had a couple homes, you know, and the more that I broke past that first barrier, because you better believe the minute that God put something in my path or in my spirit and he, he real deep in my spirit and said, walk by faith, almost instantaneously, I get met with doubt, fear. What are they going to think? Oh, my God, this is the enemy. If you can break past that 
and start to walk in faith, your faith is only going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And then nobody's going to be able to tell you anything about the God that you serve. He's with you, man. He's walking with you. If he's calling you to step out, if he's calling you to let things go, don't question it. As hard as it is with this flesh, the logic mind is an enemy to your faith. Your logical mind and the logical minds all around you are a direct enemy to your faith. Faith is never going to make logical sense to the natural eye, right? So if he's calling you to step out, trust him. And if you can get past that first barrier, it's going to change your life forever, right? And if you feel like you're at a place where God has blessed you with some things and you feel you've gotten confirmation, make sure you're always you know, praying to him and asking him to search out your life, search out your heart. Where are you wrong at? What, what areas, what, is there any cracks in your house? Has the enemy got back into your life? Like I said, he can bless you with a home. The enemy can give you these things and it looks good. It feels good. You may start, you know, feeling more comfortable and relaxed and all these things, but guess what? Now you're more relaxed on praying against the enemy. Now you're not going to war like you used to. Now you're not, you know, staying up all night interceding. Now you're not reading like you used to. You know, and we can slowly forget about God the more that the enemy throws stuff on our plate. We can have full plates, but these plates were never given to us by the Most High God, right? So we got to really um, just take a step back, man. He was just putting, putting all my spirit heavy. I'm driving. I had to pull over to record this message. I pray it blesses you, though, man. Like I said, the number one way you can identify if anything in your life was sent in by the enemy is if it's pulling you away if it's pulling you out of the spirit if it's pulling you away from his word if it's pulling you away and you start to become overwhelmed distracted the enemy likes to put a lot of food on your plate at times he'll give you a 10 course meal so you have so much to tend to that now you can't even say nothing but hey god thank you for everything and you're back on to tending to all these different things this is what he does right that's why you see the people that are of this world they are constantly 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 on go hustle 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 never stop don't sleep hustle hustle hu because he doesn't want you to have a genuine wholehearted firm relationship right god wants to build your faith up on the rock so when storms come you know exactly what to do you're not going to do what these people do you're not going to go run to your career you're not going to go run to this person and your family member you're going to you know exactly where to go you go to the word of god you drop all things if you got to isolate if you got to um fight your way out of a situation just to get in that secret place that's what he wants he wants to develop your faith and your trust in him to a point where no storm's going to knock you out nothing's going to knock you out why because you have him and we can always trust the most high so i pray this message bless you man you know if you like this video, make sure you go down there and press the like button. Leave comments down below. For all my real people, man, that have been praying for me, interceding, I'm okay. I thank you guys for all the love and support, man. As always, say a prayer for your brother. Say a prayer for your sister. Say a prayer for yourself. Till next time, man. It's your boy, Justice.